You know, in some ways, August is the longest 31 day month in the entire year, right? The weather is relentless. The garden pests are relentless. The garden diseases are relentless. It's like, for heaven's sakes, you know, let's just get on to the other side of this, right? And then in another respect, August is not nearly long enough because there's so much to be done. All the produce is coming in or we're going to the farmer's market and they're loaded with all this beautiful produce that you want to put up. And trying to get it all done is, it can be stressful, it can be overwhelming, it can be one of these, you know, kind of analysis paralysis, what do I do with all of this? But this plan that Jessica calls the Every Bit Counts Challenge in August, just get something done every day, is so fantastic. It totally relieves that stress, it relieves the anxiety, it's just, just something. And at the end of the month, you end up with so much more than you probably would have if you'd just been trying to deal with everything and ended up in analysis paralysis or 160 jars of salsa and, you know, nothing else on the pantry shelf. So to me, I am, I am extremely grateful to Jessica uh, for running this challenge and for allowing me to be a part of the challenge. So thank you very much, Jessica. Welcome to Grow and Preserve. I'm Carter and I'm so glad you're here today. Let's just jump right into this and we'll see where it goes. So we're going to start this week taking care of my sweet potatoes that are left over from the 2022 harvest so that I am ready to go when my 2023 harvest is ready. So most of these are very small but I have a few larger ones. I'm just going to take them all and peel them and cut them into bite-sized pieces, throw them on this roasting pan that I just did some bacon on, so nothing better than sweet potatoes roasted in bacon grease. And I'm going to roast them up like I would normally, and then I'm going to flash freeze them and package them up for the freezer. And I will use these fall and winter on what is always my favorite salad of the season, and that's a kale salad with these roasted sweet potatoes, and I don't care whether they're hot or cold at the time I eat them. Uh, and I also include cranberries and apples and pecans and a wonderful creamy uh, shallot dressing. And uh, to me, it just, it just screams fall. So I'm really excited to have these in the freezer. I ended up with three packages, kind of wish I had more, but it's better than nothing, so I'm excited to have them. Now I'm going to show you my little toy here, it continues to work for me. I have been using this quite a bit and I'm really, so far I'm loving it. Again, you know, jury's still out. It, it, I don't have any long-term experience with it, but I am so happy to be able to package things in a vacuum sealed method for the freezer again, because it's really been a long time since I have trusted in my ability to do that because my old machine was so unreliable. So, so far so good, I love these little, packages. They're simple and easy to stick in the door of my freezer and I can just grab one and go. So here we go. I'm going to seal these up. This machine is so fast and so reliable. There we go. So I'm going to get three of these done. Wish I had more, but that's okay. Maybe next year I'll have I'll have more left. I don't know how my sweet potato harvest is going to be, but we'll see. But this is a good thing to have in your freezer. So now that I have a mountain of sweet potato peels, I thought I'd show you how I deal with some of my kitchen scraps. Oftentimes I'll just walk it out to the composter and that's fine. But I do like to break down, especially uh, the eggshells. So I run most of them through the loamy and I just put them in this little composter bin here and then add all the good bacteria and run them on the low cycle so it doesn't get too hot and out comes some beautiful nutrient wrench uh, compost. And I will spread that in the garden. In fact, I'll, I collected a big bowl and I'll spread it all in the garden before I shut the garden down for the winter. So that's the little bacteria, good bacteria pill that I give it. Okay, now on to kind of my way of correcting a mistake that I made. These are chicken tenders. From Costco, I had intended to buy chicken breasts, 
and I just picked up the wrong package and didn't realize it till I got home. I'm not a fan of chicken tenders. There's something about that tendon being so prevalent that just, I, I don't know, I'm not, I'm just not a fan. So I'm not gonna cook these. I knew I wasn't gonna cook these. I've let them float around my freezer for a little while. They're, you know, they made their way to the back. They're taking up space. And I thought, you know what? They can either stay in my freezer and die from freezer burn, or I can turn them into something useful. So I decided I was going to make some critter food. So I have a, a small dog and two cats, and they, they love chicken, obviously. But it turns out, when I did the numbers for this, that it ended up being about 10 cents a jar less than feeding them their normal dog and cat food. <laughs> which is, I find that just crazy, absolutely ridiculous. This was organic chicken, which, you know, had I planned to do this, I probably wouldn't have given them organic chicken because heaven only knows what they're eating in their dog and cat food. But this turned out to be, you know, kind of a win-win. I feel bad about spending the money, but I was going to spend the money on dog and cat food anyway. So now I'm feeling pretty good about this, and I've... <laughs> And this little cat is, is waiting for her. She says, come on, I need some chicken. So I also found in one of my freezers in the bottom, it's a freezer that I can't really get to very easily because the lawnmower is off, parked in front of it. I have a couple of packages of very freezer burned uh, ground turkey down there. So I think I might just turn that into some critter food as well. And they'll be happy. I'll have the space back in my freezer for, you know, maybe my tomatoes or something. But it also, you know, kind of begs the issue that I do need to reorganize my freezers once all this preservation season is done. And try to get that a little more productive so that things don't get left behind like that. So I am just going to clean these up and I'm going to get them in the pressure canner. And they're going to run for 75 minutes. Or half pints and when they're done I'll have some critter chicken on the shelf and some very happy critters. The start of the season I had very good intentions for staying on top of harvesting and preserving my herbs. I have not done the best job of that so today I'm going to try to make some progress on the thyme. I did grow a lot of thyme in the garden but I also had all of this downstairs in the grow room. So I'm going to harvest all of this, get it in the dehydrator. Unfortunately all of this thyme, you know, it just makes a tiny little bit when you take it off the stems after you're done. So it's a little bit deflating when you get it all done, but it'll be absolutely worth it because I'm almost out in my uh, regular spice cabinet. So we'll get this done and I'll be happy to have it. Now on to something I don't normally do. I am going to freeze some cherry tomatoes. Normally I'm either eating them fresh or cooking with them fresh or I'm dehydrating them. But I've been so on the ball and getting my dehydrating done this year that I feel like I have enough that I can take the time to freeze some. And I'm really looking forward to using them to make like a fresh tomato soup this winter or throw them into a pasta sauce or something. I know several of you have done this and I keep looking at them going, hmm, I should be doing that. I have frozen paste tomatoes for years and years and years, but I don't eat them as a tomato when they come out. You know, I turn them into something, whether I'm cooking with them or canning them, I'm turning them into something. So this was, this was new to me and it, it, you know, kind of ridiculous that it's new to me, but it was. 
So here I am getting with the program and joining all you smart people in freezing some cherry tomatoes and I'm sure I'll be so happy to have them when it's cold outside. All right, we are headed into the biggest project of the week. This is the one I like to put off because it is very time consuming. It's enjoyable as all candy is enjoyable to me, but it's a lot of standing, it's a lot of chopping. For some reason, I, I have this bias against, you know, peeling my tomatoes, throwing them in the hot water and then the cold water bath shock and all, but you know, I do it for this recipe and I'm glad I do it. Today we're going to make the Zesty Salsa recipe from the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving. It's the exact same recipe I did last week, but I did the roasted version last week. So I did a very kind of quick and dirty version of it. Exact same ingredients, totally different taste, different look, different kind of experience if, when you're eating it on a chip. So this one is very chunky, very colorful, very fresh tasting. And it's so worth having both on the shelf. So I've always done this one. I've done this one for, gosh, I don't know, maybe a decade or more. I've done this exact same recipe. I added the roasted version last year, and that was really great to have on the shelf as well. So from now on, I'm doing both of these tomato-based salsas. So I'm going to go through, you know, what drives me nuts <laughs> as the the peeling of the tomatoes, and it's really nothing. I don't know why I have a mental block against this, but I do, and so as I'm doing this, I think it's maybe it's because it's not as active as I need it to be, so my mind starts to wonder, and I'm going through my checklist, and I'm walking away, and I'm trying to take care of other things, and so some of these tomatoes got a little, a little more cooked than I would have preferred them, but that's okay. I only do half of my tomatoes this way, and then the other half, I use my heirloom tomatoes and I don't peel those at all. So they just get cut up fresh and go in. So I'm just doing half my tomatoes like this and then we'll, we'll get the chunkiness coming out of the heirlooms. So you can see just how easily these skins come off. I mean, literally I could just squeeze out the pulp of the tomato. So all these skins are gonna go in the dehydrator and they will be dried and eventually turned into tomato powder to help me thicken soups and stews and things this fall and winter. So I'm going to move on to the peppers now. And like I did last week with the roasted salsa, I'm going to take the entire amount of peppers called for in the recipe. It asks for five cups of green sweet uh, peppers and two and a half cups of hot peppers. I'm going to do seven and a half cups total, but I'm really going to split it more 50-50 between sweet peppers of all different colors and hot peppers. I really enjoy chopping peppers, and I think this is the only chance I get to do it this week because you will be shocked to know that I am not doing any pickled peppers this week. Between last week's zesty salsa that was roasted and all the peppers I used there and all the peppers I'm using in this salsa, I didn't have enough peppers to do any pickled pepper rings. So I'm gonna get my little pepper chopping fix done with this one. And I just enjoy this. You know, I put on a YouTube video or some music or just chat with David and have a good time. This is very relaxing to me. We were made for each other.
chopper that has really cut down on the tears that I deal with when chopping onions. So I, I highly recommend this version if you can find one. It's a little messy, but boy, does it help my overall mood about chopping onions. So anyway, he was, he was a good sport about it. He much prefers his role as taste tester than as onion chopper. But I'm sorry to tell him that he, he has a new role. This is going to be his role from now on. So you'll notice that I'm using purple onions here, not because the recipe calls for it or because it's what I always do, but because it's, it's what I had. I have plenty of onions downstairs from the garden, but I had these sitting up here and they've been in there for a couple of weeks now and I wanted to go ahead and get them used. They end up adding a really pretty color to the salsa and I'm really glad that I did use them. And they were definitely strong, so I could, I could kind of feel them from across the room. So I'm really glad that David was doing this for me. So it's five cups of onions. And we may have got, well, I know we went over a bit on this because I'm doing about a batch and a half close to it with this one based on how many tomatoes I had. All right, there we go. And he's going to say, all right, that mess is yours. <laughs> That's okay. I'll take it. So a couple little pieces that, that kind of miss the chopping, but that's all right. I will take the inconsistency and I'll, I'll fix what I can and just release <laughs> what I can't because I didn't have to do it. All right, so I'm going to chop up some of these tomatoes. You'll see some of them really, you know, kind of got a little more cooked than I ordinarily would have wanted. But that's really going to balance out when I add all of the heirloom tomatoes in there and I just do those completely raw, skin on. And for some reason, I did not turn the video back on when I was chopping those. But they're in there. So I added my apple cider vinegar, salt, and we're just going to get this onto the stove. It's going to warm up for just a bit, and then we're going to get it in the jars and let it process. It's beautiful, isn't it? And after all that hard work, all that's left to be done is to put it in jars and process it. So this is the easy part. We are on the home stretch. So as always, I'm going to add the solids to the jar first. And I'm going to debubble and I'm going to top them off with the liquid to make sure that we get to the proper headspace. So I end up getting, I think it was 17, 17 half pints out of this, which is great for us. I think I had 19 of the roasted salsa half pints. So I think that we ought to be in good shape to make it through the year without much rationing. At least I hope we don't have any rationing. But I think that this is going to be fantastic. I'm happy to have it on the shelf. And these jars just look so pretty. Now I told you that I used heirlooms and I, they went in raw, you know, and then I cooked it, of course, to prepare it for canning, but I didn't drain them. I didn't pre-cook them. I didn't peel them. I didn't do any of that. So there was a lot of extra liquid in my salsa and rather than cooking it down or, you know, heaven forbid, disposing of it that, you know, at times I have to admit I have done, I decided to can it. And I did it in the steam canner. I did it for the same amount of time that I did the salsa. 
And this turned out to be a great addition to the pantry. I took one jar when it was done, stuck it in the refrigerator, and we tried it the next morning, and it was really delicious. It was better to me than a, than a V8. There are a couple of vegetables that, I don't know, don't terribly excite me in a V8, so we're calling this a V4 because it has tomatoes, onions, peppers, and garlic. And this was really just a byproduct of the salsa, but I think it deserves to be a product in and of itself. So I have added it to my list, and I would like to get some done. So look for that in the near future. So here comes the salsa. It's looking beautiful. I think I, 17 jars, I think that's what I got out of this. David likes these squatty jars because then he doesn't even have to go to the effort of getting a bowl out to put some salsa in. He just takes that and a bag of chips and dunks the chips and he's good to go. Here comes the, the V4 juice coming out. Trying to make some room for it. we go okay now this one i'm sorry this is the only picture i have of this i did a basil harvest i'm making some pesto i had intended to film it my friend christine came over with her new presto electric pressure canner and wanted to learn how to use it and i was focused on that and i was catching up with her and i'm chatting while i'm working and i never took the camera out <laughs> so you don't get to see me make the pesto but i have videos on that i'll link them up above but i did have this big beautiful basket of basil. All right, let's wrap up this week, shall we? We'll do a quick tally of everything we got done, and then we'll all pat ourselves on the back for all of our accomplishments. All right, tomato skins. These are the ones that I painstakingly took off the tomatoes for the zesty salsa. So I'm just waiting for these to finish conditioning, and then I will seal up this jar, and it'll be good to go. I will eventually turn it into tomato powder, but I do kind of like to wait until I have enough to fill up a full jar that I can seal. So, you know, this will shrink down to maybe that, <laughs> maybe even that. So I'm going to wait a little while on those before I do that. And then I have the garden time. So all that time turned into this. That's okay. I'm going to enjoy having it. It's much more than I had. And I didn't do enough of this last year. So this year I'm determined to make sure I have plenty going into winter. All this wonderful soups and roast chickens and things that we do. Now, my, what I call my V4 juice. This was, it was a byproduct, quite frankly, of an extra liquidy salsa. Now it turns out it's gonna be a line item on my to-do list in and of itself. This has really been, this has really been terrific. We enjoyed the first jar. David would like to have a jar like constantly. Uh, He's, he also said there are times when he wouldn't mind some vodka in his, but, but we'll stick with the, with the juice here. So we're calling it V4 because it is tomatoes, onions, garlic, and a variety of peppers. So I'm going to try to get some more of that on the shelf. All right. My critters were very happy with me this week. They got their own critter chicken on the shelf. So I made the best of what was a mistake and what would have, you know, sat in the back of my freezer and eventually died just because I wouldn't have eaten it. So I did the best I could and I actually ended up a little, I mean, tiny bit better financially than the food they normally eat, which has gotten crazy expensive. So I'm very happy to have a dozen half pints of critter chicken on the shelf. The zesty salsa, I have 17 half pints of the zesty salsa you can see how beautiful it is. Just stunning colors, big chunks, it is gorgeous. Exact same recipe that we did last week with the roasted salsa. Looks totally different, tastes totally different, totally different product, and it's definitely worth having both of these on your shelf. This one is a time hawk, though, so make sure you have the time set aside. Don't rush through it, just enjoy the process, but do expect it to take you know, three to four hours, start to finish. All right, that's done. Now we're gonna move on to the frozen food section. I have more than usual in this section this week. So I finished off the last of my 2022 sweet potatoes as they were just starting to sprout. And I have three bags of roasted 
bite-sized sweet potatoes that I can put on my kale salads this fall. That's like one of my favorite ways to eat it. A regular salad too is great, but I really look forward to kale salads in the fall and we'll have apples and craisins and pecans and sweet potatoes. And, oh my goodness, I'm ready for it. So I have those ready to go. Uh, let's see, we also saw that I did some cherry tomatoes in the freezer and I'm really excited to use these as a little burst of fresh flavor in soups and spaghetti sauce and whatever this fall and winter. So I'm glad to have these to go on the shelf. A couple of things you did not see on screen. This is pesto sauce. I have three bags of pesto sauce and these are about two cups each. I probably did them a little full, you know, probably a cup to a cup and a half is probably better for us, but you know, my friend was here and I was chatting and we were doing whatever and I was forgetting to film and you know, it is what it is. So I'll save those big bags for when we have company and I do a whole spaghetti squash with some pesto sauce on it. So that's what I plan there. I also got another oh, seven or eight bags of paste tomatoes into the freezer for some fall and winter projects. So, I, you know, I didn't do that much canning. I did a couple of canning projects but I got so much taken care of. So I'm really pleased with how this week turned out and I hope that you are as well. I know you have been so busy because I've been seeing these beautiful pictures. And again, my list grows every time you guys send something in. So I'm so happy that I get to see more of yours this week and I thank you so much for being here. And I will see you again on Wednesday with pictures of what you guys are doing. So take care and have a wonderful week. See you soon, bye-bye.